Step 4. Creating the 3D script. Click the 3D script window button to open the 3D script in a separate window. Type in the following lines of code into the 3D script window. The pen command sets the pen used for the contours of the elements drawn from there on until another pen command changes it. We will use the value defined by the pen underscore top parameter for the contours of the tabletop. We will use the GS underscore top underscore mat default parameter to specify the material of the tabletop. We move the local origin up to the bottom of the tabletop with the adds ADDZ command. As you can see, we've used the leg underscore height variable as the parameter for the adds command. It will carry the correct value since it was already set in the master script. The master script is executed before the 3D script. Find the description of the prism underscore command on page 34 of the GDL reference manual. Copy the code syntax of the command and paste it below the existing lines of code of the 3D script. The prism underscore command is a very versatile and commonly used command in GDL. It creates a slab type element. The interesting thing about the prism underscore command is twofold. A, it can have two holes in it. And B, any of its side surfaces and any of its edges may be set not to be shown. Go back to the floor plan and activate the 7.5 prism underscore status codes saved view from the navigator. Here, you will see a drawing explaining how these status codes work. The prism underscore command creates a vertically extruded shape based on a polygon defined in the XY plane of the local coordinate system. Let us say this is a pentagon based extruded element. The last defined point is the same as the starting point. This is how we close the prism underscore. Let us say that at any point three edges and one side surface are created when the surface going from the given point to the next point is generated. The value of the bottom horizontal edge is 1, the value of the vertical edge at that point is 2, the value of the top horizontal edge is 4, and the value of the surface is 8. If you want any edge or the side surface to be visible, you add its value to the status value belonging to that edge. If you don't, its value should be 0. The sum of these values will make up the status code for that point of the prism underscore. Modify the prism underscore command in the 3D script to the following. Activate the 3D view window to see the result. This prism underscore command will create the tabletop for us. As you can see, we defined six points for the prism underscore and the height of the prism underscore is the value defined by the thickness underscore top parameter. Each line contains an x and a y coordinate value in that order and then the status code for the point located at those coordinates and its associated edges and side surface. Go back to the floor plan and activate the 7.6 tabletop piece saved view from the navigator. You can see the six points that need to be defined. From the drawing, you can read off their coordinates. Let's take the line belonging to the first point. Its x coordinate is zero. Its y coordinate is the value defined by minus half of the top underscore width variable. You can read those coordinates off the drawing. Since we want all three edges and the side surface belonging to this point to be visible, the value of the status code will be 15. 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8. With the second point, we see something new in the status code. The status code is now 15 plus 64 instead of 15. 64 is a special value that can be added to the value of the status code. It has an effect only when the vertical edge of the given point is set to be visible. In such a case, it instructs the program to calculate whether the given vertical edge needs to be drawn because it is part of the contour of the prism underscore element. If it is not part of the contour, it will not be drawn. In the case that the 64 value is not present, 
The given vertical edge will always be drawn, regardless of whether it is a contour of the element or not. In the GDL reference guide, go to page 36 and see the two shapes shown there. The left shape does not have the value 64 in the status codes of its points. Therefore, all vertical edges are visible, even though some of them are not needed. The right shape employs the 64 value, and so only that edge is drawn. That is necessary to show the contour of the shape. This is the function of the 64 value in status codes, to provide smoother appearance in hidden line views in 3D. The next line that defines the third point of the prism underscore has another new feature. As you can see, the status code is 915, not 15. In the GDL reference manual, go to page 145 for the description of the set center point status code. In GDL, there are special status codes, like the 64 value, that can be added to the status code. These values serve the purpose of enabling you to create curved edges of your objects more easily, or create segments based on the geometry, tangent, etc., of already defined segments of the shape. If you want to create a curve, it requires two steps. A. First you need to define the center of the arc of that curve, and then B. Draw the actual curve, taking into consideration the last point defined and the center of the arc. The 900 status code is used to define the center of the arc to be drawn in a later step of the prism underscore command. The first two values define the x and y coordinates of the center, and the third value gives the status code. In this case, the status code is really 900 plus 15, which gives 915 as a result. So you define the edges inside as usual, plus add this value of 900, just as you added the value 64 in the previous line of code. The next step is to define the actual arc or curve. The next line of code does this. In the GDL reference manual, go to page 147 for the description of the arc using center point and angle status code. The 4000 status code drawn and curved segment, which is a true arc, uses the center point just defined and an angle value. In this line of code, out of the three values given, the first value is always zero, the second value defines the angle of the arc, and the third value is 4000 plus the normal status value of the edges and side surface. Notice that the value is now 4013. 13 now means 1 plus 0 plus 4 plus 8, meaning that we don't want to see the vertical edge at the start of the curve. This is the point where the planar side meets the curved side, and no vertical edge is needed since they join smoothly. The next two points offer nothing new. The last point's status code is again interesting. The status code is minus 1. Notice that the x and y coordinates of the point are the same as those of the first point. This is the clue to the status code. It is a sign that we close the shape. The rule is the coordinates of the last point must be the same as those of the first point, and the status code must be minus 1. Open the 3D view of the editor window again to see the result. In the 3D view, use the orbit feature to turn the shape around. You can see that the correct contour is always shown. Modify the third line of the prism underscore command to the following. Take out the 64 part. Activate the 3D view window to see the change. As you can see, the vertical edges appear in the curved portion of the tabletop. This is why we need the 64 status code. Modify the third line of the prism underscore command back to its original by putting back the 64 part. Now the tabletop is made up of two parts. These are the mirrored images of each other. We could script both separately, or we can use so-called subroutines to save programming effort. A subroutine is a portion of GDL which contains code that needs to be executed more than once. In such a case, it's advisable to put this code into a subroutine and call this subroutine several times to perform the same task again and again. A subroutine has three parts. One, a label. 2. The actual code of the subroutine, and 3. 
a return command. We will make a subroutine out of this prism underscore command. Modify your code in the following way. We put a label before the prism underscore command. The label can be a number or a text string with a colon after it. Example 100 colon. The return command tells ARCHICAD that the subroutine is finished and now it can return to that line of code that called the subroutine and continue executing the code from the next line there. Subroutines must be called to be executed. The command used for calling a subroutine is called GoSub. In the 3D script window, place the following lines of code after the adds line. The GoSub command will call our subroutine at label 100. The end command ends the script. The reason it's needed is because otherwise the code would again reach the 100 colon label and execute the commands of the subroutine again. However, when it reaches the return command, it would give an error message because the code cannot return to anywhere since it was not called by a GoSub command. The way these kinds of scripts are structured is subroutines are usually placed at the end of the script and they are always preceded by an end command. Activate the 3D view. See that this actually did not modify the generated shapes. The lines that generate the shape are executed only once. Between the go sub and end lines, paste three lines of code so the result will be the following. We already know the mulex minus one command, M-U-L-X, and the advantage of the subroutine now becomes apparent. We mirror the direction of the x-axis of our local coordinate system, and again call the subroutine to generate the mirror tabletop piece. After returning from the subroutine, we undo the mulex command with the del, D-E-L, command to restore the state of the local coordinate system prior to calling the macro the second time. Activate the 3D view to see the result. The other mirrored tabletop piece was generated. For the next task, we want to generate the insert piece in the middle. Place the following code before the end statement in the 3D script. Here, we see another if-then structure. ARCHICAD will check the value of the show underscore insert parameter. As you can see in the parameter list, the show underscore insert parameter is a Boolean type parameter. It can have two states, on and off, or in other words, yes or no. Numerically, this translates to one for on or yes, and zero for off or no. In logic, one also means true, whereas zero means false. In the above if-then structure, it is executed when the condition show underscore insert evaluates to true. This happens when the show underscore insert value is set to on, or yes, or one. If it is turned off, no, or zero, it will evaluate to false, and the commands after the if-then line are not executed. Select the show underscore insert parameter in the parameter list and set it to on by clicking into its checkbox in its value field. Activate the 3D view window to see the result. You can now see that the insert piece has been generated. However, it now occupies the same place as the other two tabletop pieces. In real life, we would slide the top pieces sideways to make room for the insert piece. We will do the same in GDL. Find the 100 colon label in the 3D script and insert the following code between the 100 colon label and the beginning of the prism underscore command. First of all, what we need to do is to move the tabletop piece along the x-axis. We need to do it for both pieces, so we do it in the subroutine. We need to move it with half the width of the inset piece for both sides. This is a tricky statement. What it does is it takes the insert underscore length per two value and multiplies it with the value of show underscore insert, which is either zero or one. The result will be either zero or insert underscore length per two. So in this case, the show underscore insert parameter is off. 
the distance it needs to be moved is zero, while if it is on, the distance is insert underscore length per two. So this one line of code solves it for us. Insert the following line of code after the prism underscore command and before the return command. Check the result in the 3D view. The insert piece is now correctly in the middle and the two top pieces are not overlapping it. Insert the following code after the if then command and before the end command in the 3D script. This step will return the local coordinate system to the same position as the global coordinate system before we start creating the legs of the table. Save the changes made to the object. This concludes this chapter. In the next chapter, we will continue building out table object and learn even more about the programming environment and various commands.